Hey guys, this is Talia from Waldo County and today is July 2nd. That means that my garden has been planted for more than a month and then it died and then I think I replanted June 2nd. So it's been a month. I'm gonna show you what is growing. This is my ornamental kale. It's gonna be so pretty. So these are my potatoes, and I do have bugs that I'm going to have to pick off. Potatoes that are flowering, marigolds and s'more tomatoes, marigolds. These are beans, there's peas on this back row, some marigolds and peppers, corn. This is dill, it's carrots, cilantro, marigolds, and they're opening up too onions, more dill, and it tastes pretty good, but uh, yeah. Basil flowers. These are all green beans. Green beans. This is a watermelon I just planted the other day. Marigold hiding. These are doing fantastic. Wow. The basil is getting huge. Some onions hanging out the side. Some beets hanging out the side. Marigold. Oh, it's going to flower. I planted all of this stuff from seed except for the basil and the flower. Everything else is from seed. Some more beans and a marigold hiding and then those are all peas and those are getting crazy they're actually starting to trellis themselves so if you can see they'll wrap around things a little watermelon i planted way back when it's not doing great but it is starting to get bigger so i'm holding on to it and i put this little gate so that maybe it will go up to that gate because it's a little far away this thing is huge. Literally, it was so small like two weeks ago and it, with all this rain we've been getting, it's been going crazy. So those are probably gonna be male flowers. And I'll talk a little bit about the difference between male and female flowers. But that's my pumpkin. So if you don't know male and female flowers and what that means, on things like squash, I believe watermelon, pumpkin, um, anything like that that's squashy. <laughs> um, they have female and male flowers and the male flowers will open. I think cucumbers have it too. The male flowers will open and they will allow pollinators to pollinate the plant. And then they will close or they'll open, they'll stay open and they'll cross pollinate with the female flowers. And the female flowers are the ones that are going to produce the fruit. So don't get super excited when you first see the flowers, cause I did the other day, cause the pumpkin in the front yard is flowering. 
but that's the male flower. So there won't be fruit that quick, if that makes any sense. These are my tomatoes. I'm gonna have to pull them up again. I haven't been out here in a little while because I've been working the last like five days. So, but I have some work to do over here. I got some bugs that I'm gonna have to pick. I don't think, I think the tomatoes are pretty healthy. They look pretty good. These are huge leaves for a tomato. Here's my cucumbers. And they are starting to trellis. I put this as a support in case they wanted to trellis up these lines, but it looks like they're just going to go right to there. See, this one is grabbing on. So since my last video, I've harvested, I think twice my lettuce and kale, and I'm going to have to harvest again. It's out of control. When it rains and then it gets sunny like it is right now, and I think it's supposed to rain again, it's, that looks like a storm. <laughs> But um, things ha like explode. So like if it's bean time or tomato time and it starts raining a lot, you need to like go pick things before it rains because things are gonna get like out of control. I'm looking at this lettuce right now and it is insane. I'll show you. So this is kale. Look at this thing. Look at that head. What? What? insane so onions onions that is an eggplant it's actually two plants this is a little pepper it's a little shaded romaine that's a kale plant and this is a kale plant they're two different ones and they're almost like touching and then more romaine these are carrots i believe yep carrots onions another romaine another kale another remain. Look at that. It's, good. it's producing so much. Here's another pepper hiding. I don't know if they're gonna get enough sun where they are. Oh, and a basil. Oh, look at that thing. I forgot about him. Putting the basil there really helps with insect management. There is a basil over here I forgot about. He's not doing great for some reason. I don't know. So, why do these eggplant look like shit? Literally look at this. That is terrible. Well, let me tell you. We have potato bugs that I've been picking and killing and killing. There's one. And they lay these eggs that are ugly orange, gooey on the backside of the leaves. They only eat my potatoes and my eggplants and they hit these eggplants first and they look awful. My potatoes don't look that bad. See, these are babies. Can you see that? Those are babies. You wanna crush them because otherwise you will have so many potato bugs that you can't handle it. And this guy, does anybody know what that is? That is a black flea. Also eat your leaves and they've been doing it on my tomatoes but I, I don't really know how to get rid of them other than to spray soapy water. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. I dropped him. Kill him. Hmm, who's been in my garden? So these are my potatoes. And this is a potato bug, which is no bueno. We want to kill him. You notice my shirt but it's uh from the office Dr dwight fruit owns beet farm and it actually looks like a real farm shirt so i was like psyched so if you want to find that go to target um want to talk about pest management um what do you do when you have a bug problem i have a bug problem and i'm pretty sure I have like a, I think it's an aphid on my corn, but it's not really affecting it. But I saw them the other day. But anyways, so I have the black fleas 
and the potato bug and a corn something. It's green. Um, my grandmother was talking about how she has cucumber bugs already. And I'm sure I'll get bugs on my tomatoes soon. But so anyways, what do you do? Well, you can squish them. Sit there and squish them, which I try to do when I see them. But the best thing to do is the best thing to do is to take dish soap and spray it on your plants. Um, you can also wash the dishes and then use that and dump it in your garden, which my grandmother does, but I don't really have a bucket to be able to do that. So I just use a spray bottle and I put um, bron browners, why it says I pronounced that wrong, but I put that in a bottle it's all natural and then you spray it on the leaves and it won't hurt the leaves there's also other things like a lot of people talk about neem oil which I haven't bought yet but I might have to if it comes down to it that seems to be the best and the most organic way Forcing your plants to trellis going to hurt them? No! So do it because it'll save you so much space. I'm about to do it hopefully before the storm. I'm gonna do it to my beans. I'm doing my cucumbers. I just did them and my pumpkin and my other cucumbers but you can pull the leaves straight through this gate and then if you have enough room pull it back through so that it will trellis. Um, so do it. Vertical gardening. A hole and put my compost. And these are potatoes. I wish the potato bugs would stay over here and eat these ones. So guys, what plant do you think I bought last week? Any guesses? None? I bought this pink rhododendron, who is doing fantastic. And I bought a purple one that is on this side of the house. It's so pretty and so big. These flowers were open the other day, but I'll post a picture of what they did look like. But these are male flowers, and then there will be female flowers. But look at all those buds. He's not as big as my other one, but he's coming along. I'm excited to get some fresh pumpkins. So I'm sitting in my kitchen. And that is my basil, and I've been propagating some house plants. That's an aloe. This is my corn plant. Um, real quick, I wanted to talk about why gardening is good for mental health. Uh, you don't have to have mental health problems to need a break once in a while to uh, be healthy. Um, but I wanted to talk about that. Uh, if you have a stressful job or a job that takes up a lot of your time, it's good to have hobbies. It's good to have something you're passionate about other than your work. And that is a big reason why gardening is so awesome, especially for me. Um, 
I need that time to just be quiet, uh, be silent, and focus on something that I'm really passionate about. And gardening is fun. So uh, I encourage you to do something, whether it's gardening, building, um, whatever the hobby may be. Like Wyatt loves to build. He likes to work on his truck and that's his way of having some me time. But mine is gardening. So um, I know you guys have questions about the wildflower seed mix that I'm thinking about doing. Um, so I'm gonna have to make a small fee for that because I have so many people interested. It won't be much, but just something to help me pay for stamps and envelopes and stuff like that. Um, and when I come around to that, I will make a video about what I'm planting in there, how to save seeds and where to get your research, your information about what's invasive and what isn't for New England. Um, don't feel like you have to buy from me. I'll show you kind of what to do. Um, it's just kind of a process and doing your research. But if you'd rather buy from me, I would love to sell to you. So that's all I have for you today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Facebook, social media, YouTube, comment, subscribe, like, do it all for me. Um, until next time, be safe.